All right, you guys have read the title of this video. We're finally gonna start working on the enclosure for this thing. Now, the way I see it, there's kind of two ways to go about this. You can either do a full enclosure like most CNC's have, or you can sort of do a mini enclosure that just mounts to the moving part of the bed. Uh, both sort of have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, you know, the big enclosure is, is well sealed. Uh, it, it is much better for chip management. Uh, it probably makes the machine a little bit quieter, although in this machine it's probably not that big of a concern. Uh, and the downside is it's big, it's a little more expensive to make, uh, and it is a lot more complicated. Uh, the mini enclosure that just mounts to the bed, I honestly don't know how well those work. I've seen a lot of home CNC's use them, and I'm sort of curious to see how well they do with chip management, because in my experience with a Tormach, I mean, that thing is like 98% sealed from the environment, and if you have just the smallest hole, you'll find a pile of chips at the bottom of it. So uh, I'm kind of a little bit skeptical, but it is way, way easier to build, and it's gonna be a lot cheaper. So I think I'm gonna start with that. But before we jump into a full metal enclosure or even the small version of a metal enclosure, uh, I kinda wanna do a little prototyping. I really don't know about the ergonomics and the effectiveness of each style of these enclosures. So we're gonna use the time-honored tradition of CAD or cardboard-aided design. Uh, in this case, actually, I think we're gonna use FCAD or foam core-aided design, but uh, that brings me to another quick thing I wanna talk about before we get into it. So uh, yeah, this happened. <laughs> what sits behind me is a very large laser, at least large to us. Uh, it's got a cut area of about 55 by 35 inches. It's got a 120 watt CO2 laser. But the story on how and why we got this is a little more interesting. It's a story I've wanted to tell you guys for a little while now. In fact, we've hinted at it in a few of our videos. Uh, but the TLDR is that Ryan and I and two other guys have started an engineering company. Uh, it's called Flux Engineering. And uh, actually we started it about two years ago. We've been mostly doing sort of IOT devices and stuff we've signed NDAs for and can't really talk about. Uh, but we're also gonna be developing our own products. In fact, the first one we're gonna release is coming up in the next few weeks and we're really excited to share it with you guys. That'll be a whole nother video. But the result of that means we're gonna be expanding the shop a little bit. Uh, right now we're staying in the garage and we're still gonna be making plenty of Physics Anonymous videos. That's not going anywhere. Uh, but the content may change a little bit. We're gonna be doing more product development stuff and uh, talking about what it takes to, to get a product from prototype to uh, you know, a, a mass produced thing, which is a whole deal. <laughs> it's it's uh, way harder than it sounds. Uh, I'm sure anybody that's done this before knows exactly what I'm talking about. But that's sort of where we're moving with the channel a little bit. We're still gonna be making plenty of crazy things, uh, so don't worry about that. But you'll see the laser cutter we used for a bunch of different stuff. Uh, if you're wondering what happened to the old laser cutter, it still works just fine, uh, but we really needed something a little bigger and a little more reliable for the stuff we're gonna be doing. So we got this. But for this video, we're gonna be using it to cut out a whole bunch of foam. So let's just get into it. It looks really good. I'm a huge fan of the Fusion 360 uh, sheet metal uh, function. This is kind of the first time I'm really getting into it, but it works great for foam core, if you've got a laser cutter especially. Um, but 
As far as the functionality of this thing, uh, I'm not totally convinced. You know what, one of the big restrictions is sort of the, the height of the walls here. You can only make them so high before they get in the way of the Z head. Uh, apologize for the thunder. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I am about to start machining in the middle of a thunderstorm, but welcome to Florida. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess there's nothing left to do, but give it a shot. Let's see how it does. actually did pretty well. It caught a lot of chips, uh, but if you step back a little bit, you'll see it definitely didn't catch all of them. Uh, you know, I guess this is kind of up to you on, on what is a successful enclosure or not, but I think we're really looking for something that catches, you know, 98% of chips, not 90% of them. So good solution for some, but uh, let's see how a full enclosure does. Uh, I'm sure to some of you this probably seems like a bit excessive uh, just to test this whole thing out with foam core, but uh, to me it is kind of important. The ergonomics of this machine are pretty relevant, and honestly I don't have any experience making an enclosure this size, so I figured it was worth it. And with the laser cutter it wasn't all that much work. And so far I think I've learned a few things. Let's check it out. All right, first thing, I really want to make this edge the same height or lower as the table. Uh, this will make pulling vices uh, on and off a little easier. Uh, it probably seems pretty obvious, but uh, I don't think I really thought about it until I'm standing in front of the machine, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I didn't quite account for enough space. Uh, the whole range of movement here, uh, that end cap is going to hit the wall of this thing. Uh, I could probably have figured that out in CAD, but uh, you know, it's hard to make sure everything is modeled exactly right, and this is kind of an easy way to tell. Uh, so this whole enclosure is going to end up about four inches wider. The other obvious ergonomic decision here is where the screen goes. Uh, just kind of finding the right height is kind of critical, because you want to be able to use it while you're sitting on a stool or standing in front of the machine. So it's a bit of a compromise. Uh, so this way it just lets me put a few pieces of tape and move the screen around to figure out where exactly I want it. Also, uh, you can tell there's not quite enough clearance uh, left and right, so um, again, this machine's going to be just a little bit wider. The other big thing I was curious about is just the size of this opening and how easy and accessible everything inside the machine is going to be. Uh, after using the Tormach for a little while, it, uh, it kind of is a pain. I mean, the doors are pretty big on the Tormach, but uh, I always found them to be a little bit in the way, especially when you're trying to clean the machine, so I wanted to make this as big as possible. You're probably also wondering how I'm going to do the doors on this. Uh, if you've seen the Tormach, the doors actually slide left to right. Uh, there's definitely not enough room for that in here. So I think I'm either just going to have them open like normal doors or maybe even slide out the top. All right, one of the other things I'm looking at is just what kind of angles I can get with the camera, you know, given that this is a YouTube channel and all. I want to make sure that it's accessible as possible. Uh, these panels are probably going to be acrylic, so I do have to worry a little bit about those getting scratched up and dirty. I do have a bit of a plan to have at least one section of this be clear all the time, uh, but we'll save that for another video. I'm sure there's a few other things I'm going to learn just having this thing up for a little bit. Uh, I don't know if I'll use the machine in this state or not. Um, I'm going to have to cut a few holes in it because it's not quite wide enough, but that's not a big deal. Uh, just to figure out the ergonomics a bit more and see how I like it. It's obviously not going to catch a lot of chips with these big holes, so I might have to figure something out there if I want to keep using it. 
All right, that's going to wrap this episode up. Uh, hopefully the next time we work on this thing, we'll actually have a fully engineered enclosure and hopefully it fits. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. I was hoping maybe we could have a little dialogue about that. Uh, several people asking about uh, Bracket for the Elego. Ooh, yeah, good news. Uh, they're available on our store now. Turns out it took a very small change to modify the ones for the Anycubic, so we're good to go. Uh, probably gonna be pre-order because they sell out before we can make them every single time. We're trying. Yeah. A totally unpronounceable name says, hey, I can't find your review of the longer printer. Um, am I just missing it or am I blind? <laughs> no, just kidding. Your eyesight's fine. It's probably in one of the chip tray episodes. Like well, in the, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you thought about switching to Linux CNC? <laughs> I couldn't. Thanks, guys. Thank you for giving the excuse. This is going to be in every comment section, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's a new thing. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Bianca wants to know uh, how many unicorns you need. <laughs> At least one more. This is already a bad sign. May I point you to the excellent video series? on Linux CNC <laughs> for installation and configuration. What is it? How many videos? Right. Go ahead. Right. Gorgermol <laughs> says it's pronounced <laughs> box. Easy, just blur that yeah. out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy wishes we would do a detailed video comparing different controller options. This is a lot of people that do CNC retrofits, but very few actually kind of one for one them. Yeah, I would, I would like to do that. Uh, you know, it's tough because you really only have an excuse to like do one CNC controller, generally speaking, unless you've yeah. got a whole line of custom-built CNCs, which doesn't really happen. Uh, most of the time, you, you, make <laughs> you make one of these as like an interim to buying a big CNC. You don't generally end what up with What if I just made like a little test rig that we could try out a whole bunch of stuff on and I don't know. I'm fine Gun. with that. Yeah. yeah. It, it gets a little expensive because some of these controllers are expensive. Yeah. But. If you're a controller maker and want to see yours compared to everybody else's, which I hope you feel confident in it like that, then yeah. give us a Fair enough. thingy and we'll, we'll take a look. Yep. If Linux was a car, it would be an Alfa Romeo. That is a super accurate, as a car guy, 100%. <laughs> okay, uh, Windows scaling on Box is a relatively recent fix. Uh, I also have a 4K display on my laptop, and it was really bad before they fixed it. That's good to know. I'm glad they're working on it, yep. like making upgrades. Yep. Uh, I never tried Linux CNC, but a command line shouldn't scare anyone. Scare is the wrong word. Offend a user interface designer is pretty <laughs> much where you're going with that. Yeah, starting to sound like I'm a bit of a snob. Uh, I'll own it. That's fine. So we've gotten a few awesome suggestions for the name. I think the, the winning one right now was Milford. Yeah, it was either that or Millie McPillface. Right. Both. Yeah. I mean, a little on the nose, but good. <laughs> I have one little qualm with you, Mike. Um, that has got to be made out of metal at some point. Why? I don't think that's going to stop. It's fine. Well, anything. And also... The, the holes. You're going to ruin the illusion. Oh. <sighs> okay, Just... fine. I'll put some saran wrap up. It'll work.